what's up programmers welcome back so today we'll be looking at the pascal strangle now i know that we have done a pascal strangle video tutorial previously but this one will be using a slightly different approach so the code that we'll be writing will be slightly shorter than the previous code and we'll be using combinations like ncr if you remember the formula that is what we'll be using to construct the pascal strangle we'll also be arranging the code properly so that it's more readable and more understandable now in this case we'll be, the things that you need to know is you need to know what's ncr formula which i'll be giving later but you should know what is factorial and those stuff and you should also have a good knowledge on functions and recursive functions okay because we'll be using recursive functions in this okay so now let's look into the co uh, pascal strangle so so this is how your pascal strangle looks okay and we'll get how do we get the pascal strangle uh, using the mathematical formula so let's go to that and uh, now as you can see uh, here we have i have just built a grid in which uh, you got how we arrange this elements of the pascal strangle now the thing that you need to know is ncr now ncr is a formula which comes under combinations if you have done uh, permutations and combinations the formula states that it is n factorial upon r factorial into n minus r factorial so this is the formula for your combination now using this formula we'll construct a pascal strangle okay so for this the element that we need to put over here is ncr okay so in this case n is 0 and r is 0 okay so uh, now how do we get this right so this was the first row that's why our n was 0 now you can easily see that okay in the uh, row uh, rows below them but how do we get this 0 now because this is the first element that we are printing in, on this row so the r will be 0 okay so now if you see now in the second uh, uh, like in the first row you can see that this is the zeroth element that we are printing okay so here the r is 0 but if you look ahead we are printing the first element right so the r will be 1 so this is how the f the r changes and as you go down the row your n also changes okay so this is what we will be using it but we will try to organize our code properly and we'll do it using recursion so let's get into the code now as you can see i have written down main and i just included our uh, st uh, standard io Okay okay so the first thing that you need to know is that look at this formula we need every time we need to print an element we are just applying this formula and putting the value on that uh, print area right so now as you can see here we have three factorials okay now we are finding factorials of three numbers right so instead of writing this code three times what we'll do is we'll create a function for finding a factorial and just use it three times okay now this will reduce our code and also make it more readable so we will now create a function for factorial now for the factorial function now we we'll write down a factorial function now as you know that why we, i have returned an int is because you want to return the answer back and print it so that's why we have put an int a returning an int and we need to take the parameter of what number do we want to find the factorial of okay so now the first thing is that we will be using recursion in this i know most of you guys must have done the factorial using recursion previously but for those who have not done now recursive functions are something the function calls itself okay so in this case you need to have two two things okay one is the base condition and other is a recursive condition now in this case the base condition is that if our n okay is equal to 1 or it is equal to 0 that means that we are finding the factorial of 1 or 0 okay and the factorial of 1 and 0 is defined as 1 okay factorial of 0 is also defined as 1 okay so this is our base condition now we need to look at the recursive condition now if the number is greater than 1 or 0 then what we do we need to do what we'll do is that in this case we'll just multiply n with the factorial of the previous number right because n uh, like 5 factorial is 5 into 4 factorial right so in this case we'll be multiplying by 5 and then what we need to do we need to call this factorial function and pass 4 that is n minus 1 right so recursively this value will get computed and it will return and it will be returned 
okay now that we have created a factorial function if you look close by in this case we are using this ncr formula number of times right a lot many number of times now instead of repeatedly writing this code over somewhere what we can do is we can make a function which uses this formula and returns the value same as in case of how we did for the factorial okay so in this case also the return type will be an int and now i'll just name the function as ncr now we need two parameters over here one is the n and the other is r okay so now if you remember the formula for ncr was n factorial upon r factorial into n minus r factorial so what i'll do i'll just return this value that is what n factorial so we'll write factorial of n which we have to divide by your factorial of r which is multiplied by factorial of n minus r now this thing this is nothing great that i have written i have only written this in a single line now i'll just write the formula as a comment okay so this line is nothing nothing but your ncr formula okay so now that we have returned the main part of our code now the thing that is only left is printing the pattern so i'm sure you must have looked into the previous tutorial and you know how to print this kind of pattern okay so i've just written down your uh, taken the user for number of rows from your user from the user and now i'll be declaring the loop variables that is i j and k so we'll be having three loops so if you look back what we did is we started from the zero row right we didn't start from the first row so in this case our i will start from zero so our main for loop is written now to get that pattern we need spaces on the left hand side so we'll be using another loop for this that i'll put it as j now so i've written this loop i know you are quite familiar with this kind of uh, space printing we have done throughout our pattern printing and now will come the main loop where we'll be printing our numbers so i'll just have for now in this case also if you remember we had started from 0 right because r was shifting from 0 to 1 0 1 2 or may uh, so on so we need to start our k from 0 i'll just explain you why this condition is k is less than or equal to 1 so if you look our n here is 0 so we did only for 0 but if our n is suppose say 3 okay so now we need to do this from 0 till 3 okay so that's why our condition will be k is less uh, k is less than or equal to i okay now in this case we need to print a number right so we have already created our function to print it uh, so, uh, sorry the function to calculate the value so i'll just put person d and i'll call our ncr function so n c r and we need to pass our values now in this case our n is represented by our outer loop that's the i i loop and the r is represented by the k loop okay so we have done this we have completed printing everything now we just need to go to the next line so let's compile and see if we got any errors so no errors okay so let's run it So we'll enter five. Oh, I think we missed up on the spaces. So let's get the spaces done. So after printing, every time we need to put a space over here. So we'll save it and try it again. Okay, so now we have got our desired pattern. That's the Pascal's triangle. I hope this tutorial helped you. Now, in this case, the things that you take from this tutorial will be. to look out for functions where the you can put your reusable code you can use it like this factorial function which we used and also the ncr function that we created so you should look at a problem as small modules divide them into functions and then apply them now this can make your code readable right so as you can see if you try to read or go through this code again you can see that you have factorial function you have ncr function and you have just applied the ncr function over here Okay so that's what this tutorial was for okay so that's it for this tutorial please do like our videos subscribe to our channel if you want more videos like this comment if you have any doubt and also like our facebook page okay and if you if you want to learn more patterns go to our blog that's the we the computer guys.com where you'll find various different patterns and also if you have any doubt you can even post it over there thank you